Hi everyone, I'm Casey Williams. A couple of days ago, one of my really good friends came to see me. He just received a job promotion and he wanted a new sport coupe. So here are the cars that are on his list. Usual sus suspects. Look at a BMW M4, Mercedes C63 MG Coupe, or an Audi S5. But one of the cars that wasn't on his list, and I quickly put it on his list, is a Cadillac ATS-V. Let's go take a look at it and see why it should be on that list. What I really like about the ATS-V is it's got a really Cadillac swagger to the car. It looks brash and it looks very American. And I think it's what really makes it stand out in the market. You know, start with the mesh grille, the silver, it's really cool. The front splitter, the functional air extractors on the top, the heat extractors. And then you've got the stacked headlamps that have become a Cadillac tradition over the last decade or so. LEDs here. Again, looks very nice, looks very expensive and very sporty. Come around to the side, 18 inch alloy wheels. You can see the Brembo disc brakes behind them and the painted calipers. And I really like this wedgie profile. And what I like about the coupe over the sedan is it really is planted down, the roof line's lower, a little bit more extended, and it just looks just looks a lot faster and a lot sportier. The sedan's a little bit on the boring side, but I think this, the coupe looks really good, a little more exotic. You come around the back, and again, you really get this wider stance. You get the quad exhaust come out the back. Kind of look at the splitter down below, or the diffuser down below. Spoiler here, and I think it just looks very, very nice. And surprisingly, you have a reasonable amount of trunk space in here too for a coupe this size. Back seats fold down, you can get all your luggage in here. No problem for two, or two people to get away for a weekend. Well, here's where the ATS-V gets really, really serious. Unlike some of the other V-series Cadillacs that have big V8 engines, this one actually has a twin turbo 3.6 liter V6. But that's enough to deliver 464 horsepower. We'll also gain a reasonable 17 miles per gallon in the city, 23 miles per gallon on the highway. Um, you get automatic transmission, but we have the six-speed manual with rev matching, which I think is a really good combination for this car. Um, General Motors claims the car will do zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds and tops out a track test at 189 miles per hour. So a very potent car. But what I found when I was driving the car, what I really enjoyed was the clutch is easy, the shifter the shift is just very nice, the power is very smooth, and whether you're driving around town or driving flat out on the interstate, again, just, just a very easy car to drive. Well, let's start with the things that I like first. It has a very Cadillac style to it, it's very unique, and I think it works very well for the car. Things like the cut and sewn material here on the dash, where you've got the suede microfiber and kind of the leather feel, I think it looks nice. I think the carbon fiber looks nice as well. Cadillac claims it's real, but you sure couldn't convince me by tapping on it and looking at it. I think we could do a little better with that or put a dark wood in here. I actually like the Cadillac Q infotainment system. It gets a lot of criticism, but I actually like it. I don't think it's that difficult to use. But everything's touch screen and touch slides. So if you want volume, you slide it like that. If you want to browse radio station, you can press browse and just go through them. Or you can just press on the left to get in the zone. You can also voice do it. I think that's not complicated. It's certainly a lot simpler than some of the competitors and some of the competitors I mentioned earlier. Um, climate controls right here. Again, all touches, very easy. There's the button for the heated seats. A little chilly day, maybe I'll turn them on. Um, starting stop there. Down here are the controls for the uh, configurable drive systems. So you can do it tour, track, track, sport, and snow and ice. And that configures the throttle and the suspension. Um, this car does have Cadillac's magnetic ride control system. So again, you can adjust it for tour. It's a very compliant ride. It feels very natural. Or you can stiffen it up for sport. And it stiffens the ha handling the steering just a little bit too. So again, I think, this, I think the interior is very nice. Some things I don't really care for. And I already mentioned the carbon fiber. Not a big fan of that. I think it looks cheap. Um, the seats. If you fit in their car seats, I think they're great. For me, they're a little stiff, a little uncomfortable. And I think, and I think I'd probably save, save the $2,000 plus and, and just get the base seats in this car. Um, the Bose audio system also is very good. I think it's not quite on par with some of the competitors' stereo systems. But again, it sounds good enough. And, and also, the interior is a little bit small. Um, this car is more of a compact instead of a midsize as some of the competitors, and you feel it inside. It gives a little sportier feel to it as well, but uh, definitely a little smaller inside. Well, after, after a lot of time driving the car, both on the interstate and around town, it proven that I was right to put this car on my friend's list. You know, in terms of horsepower, performance, any way you want to measure it, the ATS-V is on par with its German competitors. I think Catling needs, to, Catling needs to sweat a couple of details. I think some of the interior trim, and you work on that. But driving the car really is believing. 
The mag magnetic ride control is one of the best chassis systems out there. It's a very natural feel, whether you're on the sport side of it or on the touring side of it. It feels great. Steering's great, plenty of power, and fuel economy's not bad either. So you can buy an ATS for just under $38,000 ATS Coupe. This car is $69,935, so almost $70,000 for a compact cat of a big engine. Day. But that is right there with its competitors. In terms of power, performance, and every other way you want to measure it, this car is certainly on par with those. So next week, we'll have another fun ride. And until then, storm forward.